Hey guys, Boris Lasberg from BK. Great to be with you. Please read the disclaimer and understand that everything that I show you here and all of the BK videos that you see on the YouTube channel are here strictly for educational purposes. I want to make sure that everybody understands that none of this stuff is ready-made, out-of-the-box trading ideas. They're just there to generate some strategy for you, generate some food for thought. I get tremendously uh, positive feedback from many of you who do various variations on the themes that I prescribe here. But I want everybody to understand that everything I show you here is strictly for educational purposes and should be looked at only from that type of point of view. Now, having said this, we had a really, really interesting week in the uh, FX markets. A huge amount of volatility, obviously, in the euro. Uh, we had an interesting trade in the yen today. If anybody who caught me on CNBC this morning and saw me get all over the long dollar yen call as soon as Leesman broke the story on the Fed, you saw that, that trade was good for about 100 points as it, um, as it went up um, uh, right after he broke the story, which sometimes can happen um, off CNBC. That, that was really exciting, and it was really, really a lot of fun. Um, obviously, uh, not anything I recommend doing as far as the trading uh, strategy goes, but still, it was just really interesting to, um, to kind of be inside the story as it was happening, something that uh, I rarely get to do when I do TV. Now, I want to take back um, my idea of the scalping strategy that I showed many of you over the last several weeks, and I've gotten some really great responses. People are having some success with it. Other people are making variations on the theme of it. Uh, people are emailing me all sorts of um, sort of you know various flavors of the setup, which is a very simple setup where we take the move, the momentum move, either through the OO or the 50 or the half dollar, the 50 cent move, and we have a 50 point stop with a 25 point target. That was the original setup. However, as I started trading more and more of it, I realized that really when you're trading momentum, the uh, most common scenario that happens is exactly this. So we get long like right over, right over here, we get long the 5400, and then you get a retrace. You generally almost never get a full follow through. Momentum generally sweeps you in, then you get the retrace, and then the, the true move starts. So I thought, you know, maybe it might be more intelligent for me to split up my trade and trade half at the entry in case there is momentum and it does follow through, and then half on the retrace, which is what I did here. As you can see, this trade, you know, uh, actually uh, was quite interesting. So we, we hit 5,400, and there was a, I, I took a retrace basically 20 points down, and then this trade hit a target. Same kind of situation here. Move up on the 54, um, buy on the retrace, and another hit of the target. So on balance, this seems like it's an intelligent strategy because – you're obviously getting much better risk reward ratios. You're getting better prices, and of course, if you're uh, if a trade is uh, is lucky enough to hit, um, and when it does work, you obviously get a much better R and R on that second half of the position because you're really you're basically risking 30 because you're keeping the stop still at uh, minus 50. So on the retrace, you now your stop is is minus 30, but your target is plus 40. So you have a positive R and R, which hopefully you know improves the overall posture of the trade, but um, while this is really interesting in practice and some and certainly in theory, it can be extraordinarily labor intensive. And this is really the big problem with this kind of a setup. You snooze, you lose. Um, but as I started trading more and more of it over the um, over the week, you can see some of the setups worked. Some of them I simply missed the entries and got stopped out. Others I admit made the mistake. For example, there was a couple of trades where I, I literally let my uh, take profits at the wrong levels. The thing went to my take profit, but because I had the wrong levels, the trade got stopped out. So the more you manage the trade, the more vulnerable it becomes to all sorts of trader and market error, which is exactly what happened with the setup as it, you know, as it kept on going. It doesn't mean it's a bad setup, but it simply means that the risk in the setup becomes much greater because you have transactional risk, you have execution risk, and you generally have basically your normal trader stupidity risk, of which I am certainly very, very guilty. So I had, um, and I'll show you, I've been trading this basically in pound, in jippy, which is pound yen, in, in euro, and today I actually also started trading in euro yen. I really love this four combinations for this setup because I think these are the uh, pairs that have the highest tendency to, uh, to trend, highest tendency for momentum, and therefore um, probably the most applicable for this kind of a structure. So yen, euro yen, pound, and pound yen. Uh, known as a jippy for anybody who uh, who likes to trade FX. So taking a look at the uh, pound yen, which is also a very volatile trade, you can see I'm making some trades, I'm losing on others because I'm simply not able to um, to execute some of the retraces here. I get here, I literally just simply get stopped out. I, I I get one of the big problems is that 
if you are short and you're retracing and it doesn't come back into your direction, you simply just get double stopped out, which happened to me twice on this particular structure. So bottom line is I said, you know, it's an interesting idea. Uh, maybe over the long run it will be net positive, but it was just so much work and so intensive that I gave back as many pips as, as I made um, in the strategy. And I decided that although it was a very advanced and had a better R&R structure than my original idea, um, it was just too complicated to execute in real life. So I went back to my original idea and I actually even modified it further. I made my R&R even worse than I had originally made it. In other words, remember in my original R&R, I had a 25 point target against the 50 point stop. In this particular case, because what I wanted to do was create a strategy that required the least amount of uh, oversight. Uh, simply because I am even a person like me who is on the screen all the time is still off the screen quite a lot of time. So this is a 15 minute chart and there's a, a couple of moments here where I'm clearly off the screen. And I decided I'm just going to take 20 points. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm going to take my 20 points and let the momentum take itself against the 50 point stop. So when the strategy fails, it obviously has a very, very big drawdown on the um, on the move. But hopefully the idea is that you, you collect enough um, smaller uh, targets that the drawdown doesn't completely destroy all of your um, all of your positive trades. This is Euro Yen today, and as you can see, this is uh, uh, this is actually prior to this is when Greece makes the uh, 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 appeal for funds, which obviously turns positive euro. And for those of you who read my FX 360 this morning, I said if Greece finally makes the move, the shackles of this uncertainty is probably going to come off the euro. The euro is going to rally. It's going to be positive euro. So I get long euro yen here on the break of 24. And here the target gets hit 2410, uh, 2420, excuse me. Another break through the 2450, another move through to 247. Then I'm actually, here's when I'm at CNBC, so I'm unable to, um, to uh, uh, make, monitor the trades. And I get long, I leave, I leave a long only uh, order here at 2550, and it gets taken out at 2570 while I'm away, which is one of the reasons why I like this strategy. It doesn't require constant monitoring, it's just sort of leave it, and it either works or it doesn't. Um, and then finally, the last PS3. Oh, this was the sorry. This was the last PS3 resistance. This was my last trade that I took away when I came back, um, came back into the office. So overall, this actually was a very good day for me today because I was able to um, able to hit my targets without having to manage too many too many of my trades. And I still really like the strategy overall. It's still something I'm going to be trading even more intensely, but on a simpler way than I initially showed you today. But for those of you who have the time, who have the effort, who maybe even want to program this uh, algorithmically, obviously the advanced copying method of scaling in by half units could be a very interesting possibility for this particular setup. So this is Boris Schlossberg wishing you the best of luck, the best of trading next week, more trades in BK. And most importantly, those of you who want to see this setup explained in detail and want to see me live, I am going to be in Pasadena June 12th at the Traders Show. It's only $2.95 for the four-hour trading session with me. Sign up and come there if you're in California. I'd love to see you. Uh, it'll be a super time. So June 12th, Pasadena, California. I'll be reminding you guys every single week from now on because I want to see as many people come to uh, visit me in California as possible. So Boris Lossberg for BK over and out.